So good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really a pleasure to have this parallel session uh, on robots, on minimum wages, on refugees. So we have three very interesting papers. They're all looking at Turkey. And we were going to allocate half an hour for each paper. So we'll have the presentation, the discussion comments, and then we'll open the floor for questions. And then we'll move to the following paper. So I'm really pleased to welcome Ugar Aytan. And he will be talking about Syrian refugees and over-education. Good afternoon again. Uh, thank you for uh, being uh, here. Uh, in this paper, we uh, we particularly investigate the effect of uh, uh, Syrian uh, uh, refugees on the over Yes. Do you mind raising your voice because they can't hear you at the back? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we are investigating the effect of uh, Syrian uh, refugees on the likelihood of uh, overeducated of uh, uh, native uh, workers and and we are se seeking uh, some some mechanisms about uh, this effect okay uh, okay as you know uh, around the world uh, as as the uh, uh, secondary and uh, tertiary education uh, expanded uh, there is a uh, concern that uh, uh, this kind of uh, human capital uh, is is f is fully absorbed by the overall economy, uh, and we call this problem as uh, overeducation, which is the incidence that a worker uh, has an education level above a a job uh, re uh, required uh, is about uh, 26 percentage in, in most of the countries around the world. And Turkey is, and Turkey is also uh, suffer from this problem and, and, and its overeducation rate uh, among the uh, to uh, total uh, employment is, in, is increasing uh, from uh, the one percentage to uh, for this uh, six percentage uh, between the 2004 and uh, 2019, and during uh, this pe uh, uh, period, uh, Turkish uh, labor uh, market uh, uh, transformed uh, ra ra radically. Uh, uh, for example, the massive uh, Syrian. Uh, Refuge inflow in, into the Turkish uh, border. Uh, however, even though the uh, uh, labor market uh, uh, effects of of this kind of uh, uh, refugee uh, crisis uh, uh, has been uh, uh, well established, uh, uh, for example. Uh, this, uh, this labor market outcomes are wage or employment. Uh, 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 no study uh, paid attention to how such uh, re uh, refugee influence uh, might affect the uh, oc occupation positioning uh, of natives uh, uh, based on uh, their educational uh, background. As I said before, uh, our aim in this paper uh, is to analyze the how natives adjust uh, their occupation uh, based on uh, their uh, educational uh, backgrounds. P 
particle early, v, v, uh, v particle early, investigate the causal uh, effect of uh, serum uh, refugiants on the, on the likelihood of uh, over education uh, likelihood of, of natives. Okay? Uh, and, and, and we also investigate this effect uh, among the uh, different parts of the society uh, uh, based on the informality, uh, education level, and gender. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the background, uh, in the previous uh, 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 papers, uh, generally uh, they, uh, they investigate the determinants of uh, over education uh, for uh, natives and and migrant and migrants uh, separately on the other hand uh, we, uh, we could not any pay, any papers uh, such kind of uh, labor market shock on the over education of natives okay uh, in, in our uh, paper, uh, we use uh, three data source uh, to uh, to in, to investigate uh, this uh, this uh, this relationship. Uh, first one is uh, labor force uh, survey data set. The other thing is uh, Syrian uh, ratio of uh, on the population across the regions, and and third one is distance based instrument uh, 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 provided by the uh, okay. to measure the uh, 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 required uh, level of uh, education across the occupations uh, we, 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 we adopt a model approach uh, developed by Kicker uh, at all, and, and they use the uh, uh, mod value of each occupation. In other words, uh, they use the uh, uh, most observed succumbent years as an uh, uh, benchmark uh, education. Okay, if a worker has 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 the succumbent. Uh, rather than this level, then he, he or she would be overeducated. Okay. And here is my identification. Uh, my dependent uh, variable is a uh, uh, variable, uh, taken one, uh, if a person uh, is overeducated. And, and I estimate a LPM uh, model. Uh, he is my uh, my uh, arrival of uh, coefficient, uh, 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 which shows the effect of uh, Syrian density on on the on the outcome uh, okay. uh, and I put a lot of uh, fixed effect to control the unabsorbed heterogeneity. Okay. Uh, in order to uh, overcome uh, between the uh, variable of interest and outcome uh, uh, variable, uh, I use the uh, uh, distance-based instrument, uh, 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 which has been uh, uh, frequently used in, in the migration literature. And we should uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, my estimation uh, covers only this uh, sample, uh, 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 which consists of the employed uh, workers. And okay, uh, thank you. And uh, uh, and this uh, coefficient uh, source of this uh, co coefficient. Uh,
uh, from the uh, composition effects. In other words, uh, some natives uh, may have been uh, displaced uh, from the this labor uh, market, or uh, new, uh, newcomers, uh, uh, which they are overeducated uh, or not, and and they affect the, uh, this coefficient. And to uh, and to see this mechanism, uh, I estimate an uh, employment uh, model. Uh, which is so similar to the Aksu, Erzan, and, and Kırdağ uh, paper. Uh, uh, for example, my uh, overeducation effect is ne negative, and my employment effect is uh, ne ne uh, negative, uh, which mainly uh, show, uh, shows that overeducated uh, natives uh, may be crowded are and uh, and contrary uh, employment effect is uh, uh, positive and 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 this shows that uh, matched uh, natives enter to this uh, labor uh, market okay, okay. Oh, sure uh, here is my uh, um, uh, whole sample estimations and I see that in my in my uh, uh, preferred uh, specification, and I see that uh, refugee intensity uh, has a uh, decreasing effect uh, on on the over education in the informal sector for the men uh, on the other hand, I could not see any effect, uh, any effect uh, uh, in the formal sector. Uh, and uh, and when I see my uh, informal sector estimations, uh, and I see that negative and insignificant uh, coefficient, and I uh, uh, when I combine uh, uh, these two estimates. Uh, some uh, uh, some, uh, some overeducated uh, uh, natives uh, are crowded out uh, from this sector. For the uh, uh, for the woman sample, and I see that I could not obtain any significant uh, coefficient uh, for the overeducation uh, model. Uh, uh, but some, but there are some uh, exiting and entering uh, patterns. But uh, these do not uh, change the uh, overeducation uh, composition of of natives. And I see uh, these patterns with the uh, and and if I divide uh, sample by by age uh, group, and I see, and I see, uh, see that in in the man sample uh, for the uh, young uh, uh, young uh, natives, and I see the negative and a significant uh, uh, coefficient, and this equivalent to uh, 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 positive. Uh, uh, coefficient in the employment uh, model, uh, and this shows that negative and positive, and this shows that some native uh, natives men and uh, men enter to uh, this labor uh, market. And again, I couldn't see, and I couldn't see any effect for the woman for the educate. Uh, over education uh, model. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, in the low education uh, sample, and I see that informal sector, in the informal uh, 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 sector, and I obtain the negative effect, and this uh, uh, this is equivalent to negative effect uh, in the uh, employment, 
in the employment uh, model, uh, which puts the uh, uh, mechanism uh, about the uh, uh, clothing effect uh, in the sector. And I could, and I could not find any effect for the uh, uh, native uh, woman, but the uh, weak, uh, weak evidence in the uh, former sector of law education. Okay. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, I see uh, I obtain a significant and negative effect uh, for the man. Uh, as a uh, as a uh, mechanism, uh, and newcomers and and displaced uh, native uh, workers uh, uh, matters uh, in in my uh, paper. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting um, paper. And as I mentioned before, we're having three papers on Turkey. This one is this one is looking at the impact of refugees. And I have to say, so the issue of the impact of refugees on natives in particular, labor market outcomes, have been widely studied, especially in Turkey. There are several papers looking at that. But what is new here is that there are very few, if any, studies looking at this over-education of natives. So what the paper does is basically ask a very simple question, which is what are the effects of Syrian refugees um, in Turkey on this over-education? So this relationship between you know, the job and the education qualifications needed and whether they match or not. So this over-education um, issue is you know, understudied, as I said. And the paper uses basically 2004, which is you know, up to 2019, different sort of household uh, and labor surveys before the inflow and after. So their identification is basically using a difference in difference to try to see what has happened before and what has happened after. The challenge here, the empirical challenge in this paper, is that refugees sort themselves. They choose where to locate. So this needs to actually be instrumented. So they use distance to instrument for where refugees actually locate. And then they find that basically a one point increase in the migrant to native ratio significantly reduces the over education of natives by at least 6%. But in additional sort of analysis, they also find that there is no displacement effect uh, on native employment. And basically they argue that what is happening is that natives are more likely to change their occupations uh, to ones that are more suitable for their educational background. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have um, a set of issues regarding the bigger picture and then I'm going to talk about specific ones. So the bigger picture for me is the most obvious uh, question which is why? When do more refugees reduce right, over education of natives? So this is a finding, but trying to think of the mechanism and trying to actually test for why this is happening, I think would complete the picture. And if the story is about natives actually you know, being better matched to the jobs, is there any evidence they move up the occupational ladder or not? So I think to be able to make, um, you know, especially a contribution to the literature on refugees and migration, we need to tackle this question. And 
There is also the opposite, which is basically whether more refugees increase natives under education. So it reduces over education, but what happened to under education is also a question which is important. Finally, on the bigger picture, I wanted to also highlight one issue regarding that you don't find any uh, displacement of natives in terms of employment. I think this needs to be sort of compared with the literature you know, on Turkey in particular, and how does this compare to what we already know, given that some studies actually find negative impact, especially in the informal sector. So, the sort of more details, suggestions in Peruk, I just wanted to highlight to you, and maybe this is something we can sort of uh, discuss later, is that actually your pref preferred results only work when you saturate the model with fixed effects, when basically you have your nuts and year fixed effects, otherwise you don't get any results. Your IV, unfortunately, I couldn't understand it very well because you're basically measuring, you have like a weighted average of distance to Iraq, to Lebanon, you know, to many other countries, but it's not very clear how. The intuition behind it is not very clear. I know that this is a borrowed IV, but I guess more explanation is needed. Some heterogeneity analysis by gender would be nice. I think you have actually provided that. You've done more here than in the paper I have read. And also, more discussion on the data would be very, uh, would be very useful. So in the data section, for example, you don't talk about which exact sample you use, etc. You do under the tables, but not uh, in the table. So I will stop here, and I will open the floor for um, discussion. And then you can answer everything afterwards. Uh, I think Mohammed is first. I don't know how we're going to record that with this one. So. Uh, I have just a question. Um, how do you measure over education? Because there are different uh, methods, yeah. some objective, some subjective. And uh, in previous work, I've found that the results can differ depending yeah. on the opinion, so I used to which one you use, and if you did some robustness analysis. I used to... Uh, okay. Do you want to collect a few questions and then answer? So there was another question here. So you can collect few questions and then answer all in one go. And, and I'm going uh, to answer it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, I used the objective uh, approach and as a robustness, uh, I mean, objective which one? Uh, what model approach. And I use the mod approach. Uh, as a robustness, uh, I utilize I utilize the uh, mean approach, and 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 my results are more or less uh, similar. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Sorry, Are there high, uh, about uh, university, master's degree, or a PhD degrees, or not? Or university degree only? And I want to uh, suggest to add skills also, the, the personal skills. For example, uh, uh, for example, that requires for the job, for example, IT skills, um, uh, language skills, something like that, to add the approach. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I'm asking about if uh, there is a uh, difference between refugees and forced migrants, because I'm not uh, sure of the meaning. But you can uh, also do the analysis for forced migrants if, if there is difference. I, I, I can you say and forced migrants? Uh, refugees and forced migrants. Yes. A difference. Is, is there a difference between refugees? I don't know if there is a difference between the refugees and forced migrants. So I'm asking if there is no, uh, if, there is a, if there is a difference, you can add also the forced migrants in, in no. the analysis also. Okay. So that's my suggestion. Thank okay. you. I have two points that I want to make. So the, if I read the, uh, the, uh, the, the results correctly, it is giving a sense as if when these refugees are coming in, the natives are moving up to occupations where there is less poor education. And then you sort of support it by looking at the employment outcomes. Uh -huh. the, the employment margin is not changing. 
But I think we need to be a bit careful here in the, in the following sense. We, we cannot follow people here, right? So although um. the employment levels are not changing, the group of people uh, who are employed may be changing over time. So some natives who used to be employed may be losing jobs, others, yeah. may, others may be finding jobs. In the net, there may not be any change in the employment. Hmm. So I think it's an issue that, that, that needs to be considered. The second is, you define this over education, if I understand it correctly, at the, like at the initial sample period before the migration occurs. But one of the things that we learn from this migration literature is that when migrants come, firms actually also change. For example, they could be changing their capital stock. So the type of jobs may be changing over time, which is also going to have an implication in terms of defining what veteran occupation is uh, or whether somebody is overeducated in that, in that occupation or in that job or not. You see, the, the, the nature of the job may be changing, but you are fixing the definition uh, at the initial sample period. That may have an influence on the results, I think. Thank you for the nice presentation. Okay. I have a few points, and two of them were rightly spotted by Jacqueline as well. And the first is maybe you want to give us an idea of what's the difference between five region and Natswa for those uh -huh. who, who doesn't know, because when you control for five regions by year, it doesn't work, but it only works when you control for not one by year fixed effect. Uh, and the, the, the second point is, uh, was related to, okay, so is, could this be the, the case that maybe the, the, the children or high school students are dropping out when they see the competition from the low skilled Syrians, so that instead of getting a university degree, they drop at, they drop, or they stop at high school and get the job that they were probably getting like even before the Syrian escape. So this could be related to under, under, uh, or uh, in, in, um, not under match, but uh, just match of the, of the skills, right? So this could be it. And the final point in, in terms of the age groups, why did you prefer to use like 18 and 34 or some, maybe you could, you could limit this to 18 to 24 maybe, I don't know. Hmm. In, is there any specific reason? Because we don't expect people to, to restart education when they stop it, right? So maybe you can okay. tell us something like that. And I'm going to answer some uh, point. Uh, and you ask the uh, skill uh, dimension of the workforce uh, to, uh, uh, to implement a regression. Uh, I did some exercise uh, for the skill uh, uh, dimension and I divided, I divided the uh, sample on the analytic on non routine and non-routine analytic uh, jobs, but, but I could not run the uh, employment estimation uh, uh, for this group to see the uh, displacement or uh, a newcomer effect or composition effect. Uh, because uh, if a worker uh, has, uh, has an occupation and, and it would uh, it would be fixed as uh, employed, and I could not see the uh, uh, previous uh, experiment of this person, uh, 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 whether he, uh, he or she uh, is an uh, employment uh, or not. Uh, and in the in the higher education uh, seg uh, segments. Uh, in the labor force uh, survey, uh, uh, four-year uh, uh, four uh, college uh, uh, degree and above as a, uh, as a higher education uh, group. Uh, and third one, a uh, difference uh, uh, dif between uh, refugees and uh, refugees. Uh, 
e hoca Okay. Uh, Abdurrahman Hocam, uh, uh, you asked that uh, uh, since I cannot uh, uh, track the uh, uh, people, uh, uh, I use my uh, employment uh, uh, model estimates as as average. But uh, but I agree your uh, uh, critics about it and. Uh, for the uh, nature of uh, occupations, uh, uh, some uh, some kind of uh, uh, remedy. Uh, we fixed the uh, 2011 uh, occupation uh, as uh, the uh, required uh, uh, level of education for the occupations. But uh, uh, but I don't know uh, this uh, this overcomes uh, this problem. Sonra size sorumlu sorumlu. So we're moving to our um, next paper. Two birds, one stone, minimum wage and child labor. So Utku Ozmin. Uh, no, I think they need this one as well. Hello. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lut Gözmen, and this is a joint work with my colleague, Belgi Turan. She was also my co-PhD supervisor. Uh, so the topic is uh, minimum wage and, and, and child labor. OK, uh, let me start with introduction. So the, the problem is that so many people, so many children are working around the world. So the, the latest estimates dates back to 2020, says that there were 160 million child laborers. But uh, so those definitions do not consider, for instance, uh, those aged above 16, younger than 18, working in easy to do jobs, not as a child laborer. But if you consider anyone under 18 as a child laborer, then the number already surpasses uh, 200 millions. And one thing that this were, these were estimates before the COVID, and we already know that the disruptions in, in many economies have led an increase in child labor. So that's, uh, that's, a, bit, that's a big problem. And the thing is that this, the, the trend was coming down since like early 2000s, but then it's the, the, the downturn trend stopped just before the COVID, and now we're pretty sure that it, it went up. So it's a big, big, big problem. Why is it a big problem? Because it has, working as when you're a child has some, some detrimental effects on, on, your, on the current and future welfare of the children. For example, they have lower educational outcomes, uh, or, or they, low, they, they, they suffer physical or mental health issues. Uh, and may, even if they start working early, they may they may enjoy a lower wage growth compared to their counterparties who, who start working later. So that's a that's a that's a big problem. And what could be done? What could be done? Many many things. But uh, the two major institutions, ILO and UNICEF, are the ones who are leading the the programs or policy advice on on fighting against child labor and. The, one of the key recommendations is that the extending social protection to reduce poverty and uh, promote uh, decent working conditions and wages for the adults. So starting from this, this background, 
the, the main problem that makes a child work is inadequate uh, household income. So any policy that could that could hike the hike the household income are expected to help lower lower child child labor. Okay, in this case we we pick the minimum age, uh, one of the, the important uh, incomes policies in across across the globe, and this is pretty uh, interesting, especially for the case of Turkey because a large bulk of the workers earn something around the minimum wage in Turkey. That's, that's very higher than obviously from developed countries and in most of the middle income countries as well. So, and also one nice thing is that over the last decade we've seen additional and exogenous increases in minimum wages that no other uh, wage earner in, in Turkey have enjoyed. Okay. So what's the, what's the main rationale? The main rationale goes back to the luxury axiom of Basran 1. So, so basically, a, a household only, ch only sends his child to, to work when, uh, when, the, when the family income is not enough. I mean, it's, it's below a certain threshold, right? So, uh, but when it comes, so this is the link with the income story. But what about the minimum wage? The effects are not very clear. In this paper, it specifically relates minimum wage to child labor in a theoretical model and says there could be multiple equilibria. Uh, in, in some cases, minimum wage increase in, uh, could, could lead to any, in, even an increase in child labor, while in others decrease. This thing is another theoretical paper that uh, pushes forward the popular, pop probability that the, the increased household income could, lead, could reduce a child labor. Okay, let's see that goes. So there are a few studies in Turkey that relates minimum wages to all children or young adults, let's say, but they all take the stance of uh, the, sub, the supply side, okay? So they, they try to answer what happens when you increase the minimum wage. Those kids or old kids or young adults would like to join a labor market or not. So what, what we take a different, a different approach here, and we use a different survey. We will use the child labor survey that is, uh, that is uh, complied specifically for kids aged 5 to 17. And we will use the, the increase in minimum wage as a proxy of the increase in household, household wealth. So we will see how an increase in household wealth reduces child labor. Some of, some of early non-causal investigations hint that obviously household labor are correlated with lower lower child labor probability in Turkey in Turkey as well. Uh, w there's one study that is done specifically links minimum wage to child labor that was done for for India and where they. They exploit the, uh, the the difference between state level minimum wages, uh, but then the results are not very promising. They only see see that the, the increase in minimum wage, uh, and then they increase the obviously the household income. But then this only reduces the probability of child working in household work. They don't find any effect on, on market work, and they don't find any effect in, uh, in uh, rural areas. Okay, so, so let's see what happened in Turkey. So, so these are the different, different uh, nominal wage figures. So you would see this one is the net minimum wage, and uh, the dashed line is public sector wages, and the dotted line is the CPI and the solid gray line is private sector wages. So basically what happens, the private sector and the public wages, they barely, uh, the, the private wages barely increased in real terms over this period from 2013 to 2019. The public wages were, were lower in, in real terms, but the minimum wage earners have enjoyed a real increase in their, in their incomes. So this happened in two cases. In 2006, you would, so these are like the um, increase in real wages, and 2019. And this is also 
part of our identification studies because we know that in both these uh, dates, uh, we had elections in Turkey. We had uh, local elections in 2015 where basically all the parties promised an increase in uh, a minimum wage and that was just before the uh, sorry, this was right after the general elections and this was right uh, after the uh, local elections. So basically, so the, the election cycle driven exogenous increases in minimum wages uh, helped these people to enjoy a real real wage increase. So this is like a, a like a 35% 30, a real increase in, in, in minimum wages. So you see how dominant minimum wages in Turkey. So this is the level of minimum wage and the wage distribution. So the, when you increase the minimum wage, it shifts the entire wage distribution to the right. And you will see now, like a, it says here, by 2019, almost like 40% of the wage earners were earning something at or lower than the minimum wage in Turkey. Okay. So uh, we will use a very simple household decision-making model. We can discuss the details afterwards if you want, but let me come to the, to, the, to the data. The data covers three rounds of child labor survey. The, those children of age five to 17, it has very detailed questions on type of work, uh, the, the wage that they, the kids earn, and information about the schooling as well. So one key thing is that we define an, a treatment indicator, which is the minimum wage family. So we use the total wage income of the household, and we deduct the wage income earned by the uh, 15, 17 year old guys. So we, we, we calculate the wage income earned by adults. We divide this by the, the number of adults working in the, in the household, and we come to this average wage income per adult worker. And then we take this, uh, if this is at the, this is equal to the minimum wage, the average wage income per adult worker is equal to the minimum wage, we call these families as minimum wage families, and then the children who come from these families uh, take a, a, the, the, the treatment indicator takes the value of one for those children coming from those countries. So basically, the, we have the treatment group will be the, five, uh, the children uh, that come from minimum wage families, and the control group will be the children from other, other, other families. So basically, that's a very simple defined diff model, and we're interested in this beta, uh, beta, beta co sorry, we're interested in with this beta three coefficient and to see the effect. And we use a probit model, and I'll, maybe we can discuss later why we prefer this. Just for heterogeneity purposes, we divide the sample by the age and gender, gender groups. So uh, just a, one set of descriptive statistics, for instance, 5% uh, of children in the control group work, while 2.9% of children in the treatment group work. So already these statistics hint uh, at some effects, but we, we use very different uh, indicators of labor market participation, let's say, and for different age and uh, gender groups. So basically, the most robust findings that we find across very different species is that the, the, the minimum wage increase lowers the probability of those younger than 15 working, and primarily girls, for, for the girls, right? When it comes to intensive margin, it lowers the probability of children working more than 40 hours per, per week, and this effect is mainly for boys uh, older, than, older than 14, okay? So there's no effect on wage earners, but uh, there's effect on unpaid family worker. This is pretty uh, comparable with the Indian, Indian paper and it lowers the probability of working in the agriculture, especially for those younger than 15. Mm, sorry? Yes. Only this one is kind of an intensive margin, margin measure. Okay, and one interesting finding is that the, the survey asks a question, why do you work, right? So the probability that the child responds, okay, the reason to work, to contribute to 
uh, family income or the house family business is significantly reduced when the when the family income increases to to minimum wages. And uh, for a just one on one set of robustness, if I change the control group, uh, so the basic findings were uh, for, for every other children from non, from non minimum wage earning families, but we can change it. We can use this as a uh, those earning lower than minimum wage as a control group, or those families without a wage income as a control mm -hmm. group, but the, the main results for employment of those younger than 15 and the lower probability of working longer hours for boys uh, over, older than 14 are, are, are in place. One nice thing is that when there's only one adult working in the household, the, the, there's, there's no effect, there's no reduction in child labor. So this also supports our luxury axiom uh, argument, right? So if there's only one adult, the increase in minimum wage is not high enough to increase the overall family income to, to let the child uh, not, not work in the, in the market works. So basically, uh, these are the main, thing, main, main takes. So what we argue is that yes, we find some evidence for the relevance of luxury axiom. Yes, the, 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 the increase in family income to minimum wage increases reduces some uh, labor market uh, participation indicators of the children, but the overall take is that the 35% real increase in minimum wage observed in these seven years was not enough to, to get all children out of, out of uh, workplace. Uh, so yeah, basically, so that's it. Let me Thank finish. you very Thank much. You're welcome. Sure. Thank you for a very interesting paper. Um, so just to set the scene for this paper, child labor has been one of those uh, you know, challenging issues for many developing countries. And uh, it is nice to you know, see another paper on child labor because for a period of time, there has been actually very few studies on child labor. So it's really a very sort of um, uh, welcome sort of contribution and also, the paper is using a sort of an exogenous change. So basically, the paper is asking what are the effects of an exogenous and sizable increase in minimum wages on child labor outcomes in Turkey. And they use data from 2012 and 2019 child labor surveys. So because of the change in minimum wage, they're able to employ difference in difference and obviously, with any difference in difference, the real um, challenge, let's say, empirical challenge, is to find a good control group. So the control group for the main results are basically, you know, any other household which is not, you know, being affected by, directly affected by the impact of the minimum wage increase. And they do not find overall sort of very strong results. They only start to find results when they start to look at particular groups and particular types of child labor. So they find that this increase in minimum wages reduces the employment probability for girls under 15 and you know, probability of working longer hours. Um, but it decreases the employment probability of unpaid family work and also uh, no impact on probability of being a wage earner. So I really like the conceptual framework where you're, you know, um, having the Sue and Van, a model I'm really fond of, you know, as your sort of um, theory. However, when I start to think about the Sue and uh, Van paper, it's all about, you know, the luxury ax axiom, how, 
household only sends their children to work if their, you know, their own income is below a certain level, subsistence level. So this sort of, in my mind, creates this big question. Why are we finding impacts on, and bigger impacts, on unpaid work? So this was one thing which um, I wanted to highlight. My biggest sort of question mark is the measurement. So basically, the measurement, and I think, I hope you are able to follow with me here, because this is really important. So how you know, they decide whether a household is treated or not is basically by you know, looking at household income, subtracting the income of children between 15 and 17 who are working, and taking the average and looking at basically the average wage income per adult worker. And I think this is a big problem. I'll give you an example. If you have somebody, let's say the minimum wage is 10, right? So if you have somebody who's working and earning two and somebody who's working and earning 15, you average that and you might come and say, well, actually, this is you know, close to the minimum wage and therefore will be effective. But they might not be at all. So this is really the big issue is that, the, in, and I wasn't quite sure, I looked back and I thought maybe you don't have the data, but then I thought, but why do you have data on children who are, you know, age 15 and 17, you're able to subtract that from the wage, but not for adults. So I think this is a, you know, so at, at the end of the day, I'm not even able to say whether this is an intention to treat, because it's such, you know, the measurement is really sort of, um, and comparing it to, comparing the wage distribution to another survey is not gonna help you to solve this problem. Because you're looking at the wage distribution, you're not looking at the individuals and minimum wages in particular. So, um, so one other thing which we can discuss um, later is, I would have really liked to f look at the results for the linear probability model because rather than the probit, because obviously you have an interaction there. So covariates, I think you need to be careful because some of them are endogenous. So whether the head of household work or not is endogenous with, you know, uh, with minimum wages and child labor, etc. cetera. Um, one thing which I have to add, which is a very positive thing, is that I was sort of debating in my mind what is the best control group, because I wasn't satisfied that taking everybody else who is not you know, sort of potentially treated is the right thing. But you do a good job in terms of looking at particular groups. So one final thing, obviously working on refugees myself, the first thing which comes to my mind is what is the impact of refugees on child labor and whether actually the results you are seeing have not, you know, nothing to do with a change in minimum wage, but it's all due to refugees, for example. So, thank you very much. I will open the floor for discussion. Do you want to, uh, do you want to take some? Yeah, I think there are, you know, the more results, the more questions we get, actually, the better it is, because... Yeah. Uh, I don't know about Turkey in particular, but I know that in the region there is a big problem of enforcement. Things, including the minimum wage, and particularly for women and children, if they are not officially allowed to work, so I don't know how you would put the minimum wage. So I wanted to know if you took into account the issue of enforcement and how do you think. Mm -hmm. So there are three questions this side. Thank you very much. I'm Aspen Chasman from Anadolu University of Turkey. I actually would like to talk about your comment uh, about this measurement of uh, minimum wage uh, uh, households. Well, in Turkey, 60% uh, of wage earners are minimum wage earners. Uh, second, uh, it's uh, quite enforced paying minimum wage to the workers in Turkey, I mean, undocumented workers is quite high. So that's why the measurement may not be that much problematic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a comment. So sure. the first one is, um, 
I was expecting the motivation like as the minimum wage increases, the likelihood of children to work is increasing. So I was expecting that sort of motivation. And the findings in a way signal this because when you look at the 15 to 17 age group, so the results are changing. So the minimum wage increase may motivate these guys to enter the labor market because the opportunity cost of going to school is higher now. So this is the first thing. And the second thing, there could be many things happening between the 2012 and 2019. So it's a really long time span. And you know, they, there are some changes in the education system. So Abraham uh, Najib mentioned also there are some other stuff, other changes in the labor market as well. Mm -hmm. So instead of this, I, I would recommend you to use labor force survey for the 15 and 17 age group and use like the, the closer uh, wave of the LFS so you can be in from 2015 to 2020 and mm -hmm. other regressions for these groups as only these groups because I, so you do not have the age to go 15 groups so First. you can run this and one for the Jacqueline comments I think it's important I, I, I didn't read it but if I understand carefully so if the minimum wage is 10 and let's say there are two guys two adults and so if they are earning it's 10 so it's in the treatment sure. group but if a one uh, individual is working and his wage is 12 he is in the control group right but I believe it's poorer than this term, right because two of them is earning the family size family everything is uh -huh. size but the second group is the poorer so right. you, you cannot put it into I think so it's not a good idea to put them into your control group right Okay. Following on that point about the things changing over time, you know, there was this major education reform of 4 plus 4 plus 4. Right. And we you know from the earlier reform of 5 to 8, the increase in compulsory schooling from 5 to 8, the, uh, you know, the, the bite of the reform increased over time. So what this implies, if the same thing happened here, the group, when you look at this group, the fraction of people that are affected from this new reform may be changing over time. This may be important. Mm -hmm. And the second point is, uh, when you look at the minimum wages in Turkey, it uh, doesn't only affect the minimum wage earners. All sure. of the other wages are also indexed to the minimum wage. So when you look at, when you consider who is going to be the control group, you know, the other, the ones that are earning more are also affected from the minimum wage. At a different extent, sure. but this may have an implication in terms of how you should do it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for a nice presentation. Yeah. We use two ways of serving. Uh -huh. uh, I agree with Pirinoja, you can try the other ones of labor for serving, or you and can use an earlier version of this story too uh, in the study right. in order to check the parallel trends. Sure. Uh, if you check the parallel trends, then uh, the readers will be more convinced that there's a causal effect of the increase in the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Two minutes to the Sure. Point. Okay, so I can, can do that in two minutes. Okay, thank you for very, very nice comments. So let me start with the, the data problems. So this, the story is that in the original child labor survey data, you only have the wage income or, sorry, uh, you have the wage income of those who said are working. But the problem is we don't know the, the wages earned by individual parents or individual adults in the household. So we asked the, the Turk staff, so they, the data they provided us is the total wage income of the household. But then I realized that this total wage income also include, includes the wage earned by 15, 17 years old was because they are sampled in household labor survey as well. So that's why I intentionally distract the, I mean, subtract the wage income of those earned by 15, 17 years old. So, so basically, the only data that I have is the total wage income of total adults working in the in the household. So that's why I had to do some some appro approximation. Uh, so, but you're, you're, you're very, very true in your, in your comments, like if one gets five, the other gets 15, I consider this as a minimum wage family, right? So that, I mean, there was nothing that I could do. The only thing that I could do was like, uh, I 
just played a little with, with, this, uh, with the average. So I included both like plus or five, uh, plus or minus five percent around those, or plus or, plus or minus ten percent around these. I also consider this as minimum wage on the families in several specifications. And uh, so the results really didn't, didn't change. So the enforcement issue, uh, you must have already mentioned them that for those formal workers, the, the minimum wage is really, really enforced. And I, as you suggested, you both suggested, I also used 2006 as well and included parallel trends in, in, in later versions, in the, in the paper version as well. So the main results for, for employment of young girls and working longer hours of uh, older boys stay, stay the same. So we tried that, thank you. And for control groups, from the, uh, I, I was very quick didn't have time to explain, but in the one reasonable group, I compared the minimum wage family with those earning lower than minimum wages. So basically, even against them, we see a reduction in child labor. Um, there's one final thing that I uh, wanted to, to mention is that, let uh, me check my notes. This was something that Steve mentioned, but. Okay, so, so the education system change for the education system. Uh, so in those, in these samples, all children are affected with the first one. And only minor of them uh, are not affected by the second one. So I also uh, control for those who are, uh, are affected or not. So that didn't change the results either. Uh, and Right, okay, that's the main problem is that we cannot say anything for for children younger than 15. And that uh, is... Yeah, that it's it's a good it's obviously, obviously. And for the, for the, oh, no, I remember. For the positive expectation, which is kind of the, the supply side story that the other papers study. So, when we were making cases, those young adults want to. But I mean, we compare minimum wage pay, those come from minimum wages and those others, right? So the same motivation would be there for other children from other families as well. Especially for those families who are earning lower than minimum wages, right? So I mean, I think that's, that's, uh, that controls, controls for that to some, to some extent. Thank you very I much. Can carry on over coffee and yeah. I think So our next paper is on robots. the effect of uh, ro uh, robotization uh, on the uh, local labor uh, market and the uh, worker uh, adjustment in Turkey. And, uh, uh, to motivate, uh, and we know from the uh, economic uh, theory that uh, innovations uh, or 
or inventions uh, uh, spurs the economic uh, growth, uh, and in some cases, even the uh, employment. On the other hand, in in the recent years, uh, uh, unprecedented uh, developments in the uh, robotic uh, technology uh, forces the uh, re, uh, uh, researchers to investigate the effect, uh, effect of uh, this artificial uh, intelligence or uh, uh, digitalizations on on the labor uh, market. I know from uh, the the theoretically and from uh, 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 empirically, in the uh, developed uh, countries, uh, uh, it is uh, put forward that uh, uh, this kind of uh, technologies uh, uh, displace the labor uh, and, and su uh, substitutes uh, them with uh, the, the, uh, uh, the robots. Uh, for example, Ajemolder and Restrepo and uh, for United States and the Dow's uh, for Germany and found that uh, ro ro uh, exposure to uh, ro robotization and decreased the uh, uh, employment opportunities of uh, of the labor force. Okay? On the other hand, uh, uh, there are some mechanisms uh, for the uh, ro uh, robotization effect, especially uh, for the uh, developing uh, countries. Uh, uh, for example, uh, I did not put here Kali uh, and and. Uh, uh, Kali and President uh, found that uh, in Indonesia, ro robotization has increased the uh, 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 manufacturing uh, employment uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, marginal, higher marginal uh, uh, return of ro 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 uh, robotization and, and uh, high productivity of firms. Okay. Or our aim in 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 in, in, in this uh, uh, project uh, to uh, to uh, to, uh, to investigate the how robot exposure in Turkey affects the uh, local labor uh, uh, market in Turkey. Uh, and I use uh, a novel employer employee uh, data set. Uh, Having information such as uh, production, wage, uh, trade, and and work information uh, between uh, uh, 2014 and and, and 2021, uh, and and I merge uh, uh, this data with the uh, IFR uh, da da data set, uh, which reports the uh, uh, number of uh, robots at a uh, country and industry uh, uh, level. And unfortunately, I could not uh, uh, measure the uh, number of uh, ro uh, robots at the, at the, uh, at the regional uh, 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 level. Uh, uh, I'm going to use the uh, employment uh, I use the employment uh, sh uh, share of each industry, uh, and I multiply uh, with, uh, and I multiply uh, this with the uh, change in in the robots in this industry, uh, and, and finally uh, uh, I divide by uh, total employment uh, in the industry J. Uh, of Turkey, okay. And uh, finally, uh, I end up with uh, 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 robot exposure uh, reliable. And here is my uh, local labor uh, market estimations. 
and subscript I uh, shows the uh, uh, local labor uh, market ilçeler in Turkish and I consider the committing uh, patterns of uh, 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 district uh, and I uh, I merge uh, uh, some local labor uh, markets uh, to control the uh, committing uh, patterns of uh, the, the regions. Okay. My uh, my outcome uh, variables are uh, 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 first one is uh, employment change uh, in the local labor uh, market. I the other one is uh, average wage. Uh, to, uh, uh, to ca calculate this average rates, uh, uh, I, uh, I construct the uh, uh, demographic sets by uh, skill age uh, uh, and, and gender. Okay? Uh, uh, my control is uh, imports from uh, China and, and East uh, uh, Europe, occupation and age group share of employment, and five big uh, region uh, uh, domains. And finally, uh, uh, ICT import of uh, uh, local labor market. I B is my uh, coefficient of interest. Okay. And I estimate a, a vertical level uh, equation. Uh, subscript uh, uh, W is uh, is is uh, is showing the workers. Uh, uh, here uh, Y is uh, 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 some of uh, uh, total uh, work days and rates of, of work. Uh, W in industry J, and uh, it's uh, WJ is uh, individual firm, uh, firm and industry uh, level uh, uh, characteristics. Uh, my exposure uh, uh, variable uh, here is uh, industry uh, level uh, only. Uh, here is my uh, some descriptive analysis. Now I see the uh, number of uh, robots. Are, are increasing uh, dramatically, and half of this uh, uh, increase is coming from the automotive industry, uh, which is uh, consistent with other uh, countries. Here is my uh, uh, robot per thousand uh, worker, and uh, among the uh, lead uh, countries, and Turkey is, uh, uh, has a uh, uh, lowest uh, number. Okay. And I forgot to uh, emphasize that uh, uh, to control the uh, endogeneity, I use the, uh, uh, this kind of uh, instrument, uh, which uses the, uh, uh, which uses the, uh, Robot uh, number of eight uh, countries. Okay. And here is my some uh, some descriptives, uh, which is uh, consistent uh, with the uh, uh, industrial uh, uh, pattern of uh, uh, Turkey. And here is my uh, uh, main uh, specification. Uh, uh, covering all industries, and I see that uh, uh, predicted uh, robot exposure, uh, which is my uh, uh, variable of uh, interest in all specifications. Uh, we see that uh, uh, ro uh, robot exposure has a significant and uh, uh, positive effect. Uh, on the employment. On the other hand, uh, we could not obtain any significant uh, 
uh, effect. And uh, a sixth uh, column, uh, which uh, covers the all uh, controls, is my uh, preferred specification. And I divide my sample uh, uh, manufacturing and non uh, manufacturing. And I see that uh, 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 most important uh, uh, effect of uh, robotization is uh, coming from the uh, uh, manufacturing industry. On the other hand, uh, I found uh, weak evidence for uh, uh, non-manufacturing industry. Uh, and I divide my sample by uh, 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 skill level of, of the uh, workforce, and I see that uh, I obtain a, a similar estimate for, uh, for both uh, groups in the manufacturing industry. Uh, uh, okay. uh, and I see the uh, and I see this uh, positive effect in, in the uh, young age uh, group of uh, manufacturing industry. Uh, okay. uh, here is my uh, uh, worker level analysis. Even though I, I obtain uh, some positive effects, uh, but there are some uh, 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 displacements effect on, on, on the worker side. Uh, and I see that uh, 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 workers uh, employed in um, uh, 2014 has uh, 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 has been uh, ne negatively affected by the ro robotization. On the other hand, if they sur survive uh, in in the labor market and they are uh, re re rewarded with the uh, uh, higher uh, wages. Okay. okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. Is it the PowerPoint? Yeah, okay. Oops. Thank you very much for a very interesting uh, presentation and very interesting paper. So basically the paper asks how robotization or robots affects uh, local and worker level labor market outcomes in Turkey. And they use employer-employee data, and they use data on robot, uh, robots 2014 to 2021. And there are two um, main analyses. One is at a provincial level, and one is at worker level. So let me start by saying that I'm going to comment on the paper I read, which might be different from the paper or the version you have presented. So um, they instrument the automation exposure at the province using the change in um, the number of robots in leading nine countries in terms of robot stock EU, which I think is a very sort of um, interesting IV. And basically, the, this is the main empirical challenge in this paper, which is trying to instrument for exposure to automation. Um, and they basically find that robot exposure has positive effects on employment growth of provinces, 
both for manufacturing and non-manufacturing. And for the worker level analysis, they actually find that workers who stay in have, you know, have reduced their employment and they also find that they were likely to separate more. So they were more likely to actually have negative impacts. But if they move, then their earnings are higher. So basically, looking at the bigger picture, the first question which comes to one's mind is, why does automation exposure increase employment? So I think it's fair enough to you know, do an exercise, find something. But I think we are now interested more and more into the mechanisms. So why is this happening? Is this sort of a strong, robust result, or is this a fluke? So why are we, you know, and obviously because there is very little in terms of theory or any sort of explanation, and it goes opposite to what we've expected. I think we need a little bit more um, sort of discussion. The other sort of big puzzle for me was the difference between the sort of provincial, regional results, which actually show this you know, sort of uh, automation exposure increasing employment. You look at the worker level, and it's a completely opposite story. So the, f the question is, how can you reconcile those two set of questions, right? How can we, you know, so these are the two bigger questions I want to sort of raise. And then the other issue, um, more sort of specific and suggestions. Um, the first issue is the robot exposure, whether it really captures what you wanted to capture. So, you know, you're basically using a very aggregate measure of automation. And you're looking at, you know, so those industries might not actually be using automation at all anyway. It's just you're using an aggregate level at the provincial or regional level. So some discussion of the limitations of that or trying to, call, you know, any other source of data which actually shows that, you know, this is a very good sort of measure of automation would be useful. The other issue is that you don't show us the first stage of the IV. So we don't know whether actually the results. First the, yeah. The first stage, you know, the OLS of your IV, where we're supposed to see whether your instrument works or not. We do not see it. Um, and then finally, uh, which is my last comment anyway, is. Yeah, sorry. So my last comment basically was about the worker analysis, which wasn't very clear to me, you know, what is the measure of robot exposure you're using? Are you using the same one you've used before? I thought you were using a provincial one, but I think you said industry one when you did your presentation. So I wasn't quite sure what is the measure of robot exposure you're using in the worker analysis. And obviously, once you go into looking at individual results and you start to talk about earnings of people who move and you don't take care, you don't control or account for who moves, then you have a selection issue. So on the top of the table showing that they are, you know, um, in terms of they are less likely to move, but those who move have got a positive sort of um, earnings. So I suggest we take other questions and then we can have one final round of answers so that we can actually catch our coffee on time. Thank you.
industry and uh, district level uh, 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 and uh, I take a base language of each district. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, and I'm sure we're going to have more discussions over coffee. So uh, I guess we need to clap for all the speakers. And <laughs>